Let's talk about biotin, and the question is, does it really work for your hair? As in biotin shampoo, will it actually help you with hair loss or other problems? What is biotin? It's vitamin B7, so it's one of the B vitamins, having to do with a couple of German words which describe skin and hair. And biotin itself comes from the Greek word bios, which means life, and then the chemical name in, as in biotin, meaning the formation of life because of the importance of biotin in a growing child. And if a child is deficient because the mother's deficient, that child will have all sorts of malformations in growth and development. And how biotin really works, it acts as a coenzyme, like a helper enzyme in the formation of protein. It's like even in the formation of omega-3 fatty acids. And as you know, there's a lot of different uh, fats and proteins that make up body tissue. One study I found uh, using very high amounts of biotin for MS, which is an autoimmune disease involving with the destruction of the the fat layer around the nerve, which is called the myelin sheath. And so biotin is kind of a helper in the formation of myelin, but it's also a helper in the formation of hair, uh, normal skin. Now, I think the most important thing to know about biotin is that there's a dramatic effect in biotin when someone takes antibiotics. Well, because the microbes in your large intestine actually make biotin. Now, what's unique about that is that it makes just as much as you get from your diet, but it makes it mostly in a free form. You see, when you get biotin from food, uh, most of it's locked up in proteins. So you have to digest and break that up. So the majority of biotin you get from your diet is not in a free form like you would get from the microbes in your intestine. So this is why anything that destroys your microbes, especially antibiotics, but other things too, can have a profound effect on biotin. So to get enough biotin, you need uh, enough microbes and also you need it from the diet as well. Now, despite what you read on the internet, it's not as easy to get biotin from the diet. Yes, a lot of different foods have a small amount of biotin, but unless you're consuming egg yolks, liver, kidney, which I don't think anyone that I know eats kidney, or some cheeses, chances are you're probably not getting enough of that biotin from the diet. And even the RDAs for biotin or the amounts they calculated as being adequate amounts are not fully agreed upon. In other words, we don't have enough scientific data to really know. Also, there's other things that cause a deficiency of biotin that you need to know. If you consume raw egg whites because it locks up biotin. If you're on the ketogenic diet, your demand for biotin goes up because of how much uh, fat that you're consuming and how much more of an increased demand biotin is going to be needed to deal with the fat. This could explain why someone that goes on a ketogenic diet without necessarily enhancing their diet with biotin could potentially end up with either a skin rash or hair loss or hair thinning. If someone is on an anti-seizure medication, if someone smokes or drinks alcohol, that can lower the amount of biotin in the body. If someone had lowered stomach acids or if someone's pregnant or breastfeeding, that can increase the demand for biotin. If someone is a super athlete and they exercise a lot, that can increase the demand as well. And also as we age, we can be more deficient. There's even some genetic issues, okay, that can cause you to become deficient. And a problem with biotin related to your genes could also be the reason why a person might need more biotin to override that uh, interference. Now, as you see, when you buy biotin supplements or you see them in certain shampoos, you'll see very high amounts of biotin. Now, is that a problem? Uh, not necessarily because biotin is water soluble. Can biotin in a cream or a shampoo be absorbed by your skin? And the answer is yes. And the benefits of using it as a shampoo or taking it oral as a pill is this. If you have a subclinical, okay, a slight deficiency of biotin, you may end up with thinning of the hair, hair loss, and you may end up with skin rashes, primarily of your face. Now that's a subclinical deficiency, okay? So this could happen if you just had antibiotics or you just are not fortified with enough of the right microbes 
or you're just not consuming enough of it from the diet. So let's say you don't eat eggs or you don't have liver or kidneys, et cetera, or you're on the ketogenic diet, increasing the demand for uh, biotin. But that's a subclinical deficiency. A major deficiency can create the following, alopecia, which is basically an autoimmune condition where you have patches of hair uh, that are falling off of your head. You may end up with a more serious dermatitis or skin problem called eczema. You might even have a seizure or have candida, or even it can affect your mood as depression. So if you have a subclinical problem with biotin, the biotin shampoos might help you, but I wanted to give you a full understanding about biotin so you can start including it in the diet and even in a supplement form. Now, if you haven't seen this popular video on hair loss, I put it up right here. Check it out.